What's up, team? Sean from us to live here, and we've got some breaking, serious news you need to pay attention to. So, look, here's the deal. I'm not going to waste time. We're going to jump right in. Uh, we received a pretty significant update from the financial world. Fitch ratings, not to be confused with Abercrombie and Fitch, although they're probably equally important, I'm sure. They've come out and said that there's been a downgrade to the United States long-term foreign currency issuer default rating. And what they've done is they've shifted it from the top tier, triple A, right, AAA, down to AA+. plus. So I want to get into a little bit of what's behind this and why it's happening, what this could possibly mean, okay? Because it's pretty significant. So first and foremost, Fitch highlights several reasons for this, right? Number one, and firstly, the expected fiscal deterioration over the next three years. So this includes a growing general government deficit, a high debt burden, which, let's be honest, it's been going up. Right. Secondly, there's been a steady erosion of governance standards over the last two decades, which is another pretty significant concern. Now, of course, you might say to yourself, well, the past two decades, and let's be honest here, haven't been the easiest. Dot-com bubble, financial crisis, then we're coming into COVID, now we've got more issues on the table, there's a lot of political infighting. The reality is these are all things that create problems. And if you were to think of the United States as a company, and a company was going through this, you'd be concerned there as well. It's just calling that out. Now, I think the biggest piece here is this has been particularly evident from the perspective of repeated standoffs over the debt limit and last minute resolutions that are really impacting the confidence folks have in our ability to fiscally manage our country's debt. Um, and if you don't get how serious this is, it's serious. It's not the end of the world. It's happened before, but it's enough to pay attention to that. Finally, all this fighting between political parties is having a real impact on what's going on for all of us. Now, here's some more things, right? The U.S. government's deficit is predicted to rise, and alongside that, so is the debt-to-GDP ratio, right? So these are yet another concern for the economic health of any country. Forget about the U.S. for a second. Any country that's seeing a debt-to-GDP ratio rise, it's not good team, Okay. Now, let's just add a little more to this because I really want to make sure we're leaving with a thorough understanding of what's happening. Fitch also is anticipating a mild recession hitting the U.S. <coughs> excuse me, by the end of 2023. Now, I don't know if this is going to happen or not. Frankly, I'm sure they could be right. I'm sure they could be wrong. But just something to consider that they're calling for a mild recession by the end of 2023. And they believe this is going to put additional pressure on fiscal conditions that are already existing. So, you know, things aren't great. They don't look like they're going to improve and there could be extra pressure coming. Significant. But let's step back, though, because, you know, this isn't all about negativity. So the United States is still the preeminent reserve currency, right? This is a good thing. We know there's pressure and challenges there, but, you know, we still are. Uh, the country's economy overall is very strong. So this isn't necessarily about weakness in the economy. It's all the bullcrap going on around the political sphere, the infighting, the constant problems that are happening. But we stay resilient as a country. So that does have a degree of flexibility in the way we can think about this and approaching it, as well as do we get that rating back. So let's talk about that for a second. You know, as far as any future ratings go, any kind of a major increase in government debt, a decline in coherence of policymaking, these could actually cause more problems or a further downgrade. I don't really see that happening, but it's possible. Now, on the flip side, any kind of fiscal adjustment that addresses mandatory spending, the GDP ratio, the way we fight internally on politics, if we can solve those problems, we could see the rating go back up. So, team, that's it in a nutshell. It's quick and simple. It's good to know these things. It's good to know how it affects the markets. When our government has to pay more to borrow money, it always comes back to the consumers and what we have to pay for it and how we have to deal with that. That can show itself in inflation. It can show itself in taxes, all kinds of things. What I want to caution you on as a final moment here is that if you're waiting for someone to come in and save us, it's probably not going to happen, right? We have to look at this holistically. We have to stop the fighting between parties. We have to stop the fighting over debt limits. We have to be more responsible with how we treat our capital in this country. I don't mean from a political perspective. I just mean in general, it's important we understand that things cannot always keep going up, whether that's spending, inflation, or debt ceilings. There has to be some degree of clarity. And we're not talking about fault or blame, whatever. What's happened has happened. We got to get back on the rails and get this train moving ahead. So team with that, thanks so much for watching. Appreciate you and hope that was a simple explanation. See you later.